Hello and welcome RC Gym in the hangar. Today's sponsor is clearly seen, FPV24. Thanks guys for sending me this Gen's Ace charger. First we will do a quick review of this thing and then I will show you something exciting that I had in mind with this. Okay, so let's do a quick unboxing. It's a fake unboxing. I already played a lot with this device. Packaging was nice. Manual 2 XT60 to EC3 to EC5 and to Dean's. Of course you get one of those which would go in to here. And in the back I could plug in a fat lipo. You have a 2 to 6S balance plug and XT60 go directly in. We have no wheel, we have just simple buttons. The scroll wheel of something like this ISDD thing here might be a bit fancier, but it already sometimes fails or is inaccurate on me. Kind of the same goes for those plastic wheelies. Channel A, channel B, it says it here. In channel A I see of course the voltages, like this, enter button, you can, you can charge, discharge, send them to storage, balance, external discharge or set this output as a digital power supply. Sync charge. Here you use two plugs into one battery but we will do a normal charge. Battery type can be LiPo high volt, normal LiPo, lithium ion, lithium ferret and nickel metal hydrate, the old yeah, any loops or something like this. Target voltage, defaulted at 4.2 volts. Target current, uh, as a rule of thumb, I mostly charge at 1C, so that's an 1800 Ma battery, means 1.8 amps to be charged. And then we start the task. Yeah, and that's it. Not very different than other chargers, but I like the menu structure, I like how fast it is. So while charging we see the charging power milliamps gone into and with up and down we can scroll. And here I see the internal resistance of the single cells. The larger the packs or the, the higher the C rating is, the lower the micro ohms get. Yeah, and of course you can charge two packs at the same time. With AC power, so with your normal wall plug, you get 200 watts of charging. And with a direct battery connected, you can have up to 600 watts. If you long press the enter button, you get a few additional settings. System parameters, you can reset the language to German, for example. Input voltage, why this is important for my application, you will see later. Here you can set the cutoff voltage uh, so that you do not discharge your donor too much. Okay, so that's pretty basic stuff. For a charger, compared size-wise to kind of like this charger, but cannot charge with a battery. You can only charge with AC power. And recently, I got a few of these here used. They are quite nice because you can remove a little power supply, the XT60 in here, which is yeah the same connector that they use from their power supply. And initially, I thought I will use this in my field charging box. And two of these are maybe, yeah, kind of the same volume, but it's a bit more of a hassle. Now I want to talk a bit more about the reason that I got the charger. Although I have a lot of chargers up in my living room. Why in the living room you shouldn't leave your charger alone while charging, so always charge there where you are the most. I got this huge lithium ion pack out of my electronic scooter, especially in the winter where I don't use it and it's easy to take out. I thought I could use this for my flying. It tells us it has 360 watt hours of usable energy stored into it. Made a project around this. I printed this little handle which carries the charger. And I also needed a step down that I got like for 24 euros from Amazon. I can link it below. To get from this 36 volt down to 12 volt. So this would have been my nice and clever mobile power supply to charge my packs. But the only problem was I just got out like 100 watt hours, 150. Apparently those Chinese lithium ion packs in your e-scooters are shitty. 
It was a nice project because I loved designing this and yeah, you can find the design for this handle and stuff if you want to build something like this but massive thanks to all my patrons like Phil my first ever patron Slinky who just upgraded his pledge and yeah he earned the right to get a nice sticker on my wall <laughs> and of course to all the other guys thanks a lot and to my non-patrons there are some free spots still <laughs> thanks a lot guys and I found this like pelican case in my hangar here lying around. Uh, originally it was to store a Mavic. <laughs> it's a bit overkill for a Mavic, right? And that's where this, the contents of this box get important. I tried to get as many stickers from battery vendors, but <laughs> the star of this box definitely is this. Is this the, the, the largest LiPo that you've ever seen? So I have a 26 amp hours. 6S pack here, a tattoo. I will talk about this in a minute. And I have a convenient place for the iMars Duo here. I got this little display of Amazon and it's just fed from the balance plug. And it either tells you the voltage, 23.3, or the percentage. And I got stuff in here like a battery checker and some cables and stuff. I'm there on the field. I would plug this in here and let the fat lipo be my storage. I can like limit the input power. Say on 3.2 volts, this is totally flat, so like 3.4 volts times 6. So 20.4, maybe set it to 20.5 volts or 20 volts, should be a safe margin. It has 577 watt hours, which is a lot. I will display a table now, an Excel file, where you can do some calculations about how many of these little smaller packs can you charge, or even how many of these 8 amp hour 6S lithium ion thing is here. Yeah, a lot. It is a bit on the heavy side, of course, 6 or 7 kilos with the box. But again, it sits there. I don't have small hands. But yeah, to put this into perspective, this is a 4S1800, <laughs> also a tattoo. This wasn't sponsored, by the way. I bought this myself, but I bought it used, Craigslist type of thing here we have in Austria, Wilhaben. I bought it from a guy that I trust, and instead of 530 euros, it cost me like 250, which is still some cash, but yeah. For me, it was the best way to store a lot of energy in my box. This is a huge bag, but I really like it. The beauty of having such a fat lipo as your buffer. If you go or if you plan on going to fly a whole day, you need a lot of packs. You can either buy a lot of packs, charge them at home, take them to the field, fly all of them. That would be the ideal solution. But in reality, yeah, it starts to rain, you have half of your packs unused, you go home, you discharge it with something like this here. Discharging packs, while it is good for their lifetime, but it's still it's not efficient. So what I do now is, if I come home from flying, batteries, especially LiPos that are fully charged and I didn't get to fly them, I can charge them back into the fat, fat LiPo. This thing here, you also don't want to have it fully charged always in your box. It should be around 3.8, 3.9 volt uh, for cell chemistry to be stable enough. If it is very empty, I would charge it after the day of flying to 3.8 to have it at 50%. If it has too much power in it, I could charge a few of my smaller packs even at home with this as a source. But normally, after a day of flying where I have a few of those LiPos still at 100%, I would use the iMars Duo to put this power here back into the main tank. This way, these things here at storage charge, you just gotta make sure that you do the calculations right. 4 times 3.8 volts. 15.2 is not an option, so I would set the the input power limiter to 15 volts, which is okay, because under load they sag a bit. And of course I take care not to charge this over like 4 volts. If I know that it will be a heavy day of flying, I can charge this fully to yeah, 4.2 volts, 
But then, yeah, that's one thing. You really need a beefy charger at home to charge this thing because you could charge it with even with more than one C. <laughs> you never charge it above five C. It is 130 amps. You could charge this with 2,800 watts, <laughs> but you shouldn't. You shouldn't really. Uh, normally you charge it at one C. That's still 26 amps. Uh, I never charge it over like 15 amps or something like this, so it takes a bit longer, but yeah. It was nice for me to play around with batteries once again, and I can only encourage you not to treat your light posts like shit. Because my light posts, they are really old, I can look up how old they are, but they still perform quite nice. Since I always keep them at the 3.8 volts if I don't use them. There's a video from Bardwell if you don't believe me. But you've, for sure you've heard it oftentimes enough. I know the discharging thing is yeah, a nice to have thing that you end up not doing at home. Maybe if you also want to build a mobile charger thingy like I did, then you have something easy to discharge your packs. Okay, that was a long video already. Thanks a lot for watching. I want to ask you something. If you do any kind of purchase on the FPV24.com and I I can honestly recommend this shop because it's one of the largest in Europe at least. Check their prices, if they are good, buy it at them. And a small amount of commission will go to my account so I can yeah, buy stuff off their webpage and do reviews, something like this. So if you want to support me this way, check out the affiliate link in the description below. As I said, normally I don't want to have the connection between me showing a product and you buying it directly if I'm motivated with money. But on a general basis, if you shop there anyways, you could use the affiliate link. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.